Today we're going to be talking about the concept of universal space. In between planets, stars and galaxies, we find these large distances of... <laughs> no, just kidding, not that universal space. Although space architecture could be a great topic to discuss, today we're going to be looking at the concept of universal space in architecture, as popularized by German architect Mies van der Rohe during the second half of the 20th century. In short, Mies described universal space as a large free span space enclosed only by a glass facade. And he famously used a photo of the Glenn Martin Aircraft Assembly Building to illustrate this concept. But why was universal space important back then? And is it still important today? Well, yes, it is. You'll see, unlike planes, cars, cell phones, or just about any other object produced by man, buildings last for a very long time. Like, very, very long. They are also very expensive, which means we can just toss them out and get new ones every so often. Once built, it is likely that any building will outlive you, me, our sons, grandsons, and many generations after us. I mean, if you don't believe me, talk to these guys, right? It is therefore important that buildings are capable of adapting and evolving with us. Because at the end of the day, buildings are tools that we design to serve us, to make our lives easier in some way. And if they can't do that, well, they become obsolete. And in the best case scenario, they might become an obsolete structure worth visiting. Go talk to these guys again. But in most cases, in most cases, oh well, maybe we won't get into that today. To me, universal space was the answer to this dilemma and the only way to guarantee that buildings would be able to adapt to any reality, even one that we cannot imagine today. Because who could have imagined this? Or this? Or this, right? Universal space is flexible, it's adaptable. It's kind of like a universal blood donor. It can be used for anything. Take a look at Mises' building for the architecture school at the IIT, the Crown Hall. By the way, this is considered to be the first truly universal space building that he designed. Who is to say what this building could or could not be? Mies designed it to be an architecture school, but it has also been used as an art gallery and to host balls and galas. But let's push our imagination a little bit further. Could this space become something entirely different? A lab, maybe? A gym? A house? A supermarket? Well, yeah, it totally could, and quite easily. Just place the right furniture and it can become anything you want it to be. And that is the power of universal space. Now, some of you might be asking yourselves, how come nobody realized this until me? The truth is, universal space was very hard to imagine, let alone achieve, before the 20th century. The construction techniques simply were not there yet. But after the end of the Second World War and the uprise of the Industrial Revolution still became more and more affordable and large free-span spaces became something achievable for cheap for the very first time. But even Mies didn't wake up to the idea of universal space one day. It took him decades of continuous explorations to get to it. If you look at some of Mies' first design, they look honestly not that impressive. They barely stand out from what every other architect was doing at the time. These designs fall into the category that we call enclosed space, where each room is separated from one another and the interior and the exterior are clearly divided. From there, his designs kept evolving. And if we look at plans for the Creffel house or the Lange and Esther's house, we see how interior rooms start to interconnect with one another and how openings gradually enlarge to bring the exterior inside and vice versa. We now call this type of layout continuous space. Keep moving forward and you'll find buildings such as the Tuchenhead House or the Barcelona Pavilion. Here, the walls have become completely detached from structure and full floor-to-ceiling windows blur the line between what's inside and what's outside. We now know this as free plan. And it is only after mastering the free plan 
that Mies formulated his idea for universal space. Today, universal space is arguably more relevant than ever, as our societies evolve faster than they ever have. And some of the most successful buildings being built today are actually pure universal space. See you in the next video. Bye.